Eye on Culture is sponsored by the Yanatovich Family Foundation. Eye on Culture. As fate would have it, the life of Ukraine's national poet, Taras Shevchenko, was comprised of four very different stages. The first was the bondage of serfdom, which almost miraculously ended with his being bought out of servitude. Then, ten years of freedom, fervent creativity and fame. This period was cut short by his arrest and lengthy exile, after which Shevchenko knew freedom once more. However, death mercilessly took him, only a few years later. Almost all of Shevchenko's poetic works were written during his two periods of freedom. His creativity was silenced by his incarceration and humiliating military service, during which he was strictly forbidden to write and paint. It is not surprising then that the long silence into which Shochenko was forced had a fundamental influence on his spiritual state and worldview. The works of Shochenko prior to his imprisonment were of a completely different nature than those written after his exile. Although he was still himself, and his works continued to reflect his unique poetic voice, they changed radically in theme, language, style, and means of expression. The Shochenko, who is well known to the wider reading public, the national poet and prophet, this is Shochenko prior to his arrest. His works from that time contain folk motifs and also reflect Ukrainian historical and social themes. He weaved legends of Cossack glory and Ukrainian historical memory in poems such as Haidemake. Shochenko used words to fight against serfdom and injustice, Tsarist despotism, and the enslavement not only of Ukrainians, but also all other nations within the Russian Empire. For instance, in the poem, The Caucasus, he condemns Russian imperialism. He also foresees the genocide of the Cherkessian nation. Shochenko at that time is a romantic visionary, trying to understand the underlying metaphysical explanations for Ukraine's historical fate, such as in the mystery play, The Great Vault. Shochenko is a national prophet in the epistle to the dead, the living, and to those yet unborn countrymen. And this is the Shochenko that Ukrainians celebrate during annual commemorations of his life and work. However, many notable scholars of Taras Shochenko's poetry believe that this first widely known period of his creative work did not represent his most important contribution to Ukrainian and world poetry. That is, not his romantic elevation of folkloric poetry and not his nation-building poetry that portrays a vision of Ukraine's past and future. George Shevelov, for instance, believed the most important part of Shochenko's creative legacy was formed in the last period of his life, when the poet expressed in a most sophisticated way his ideas about the nature of life and people's place within it. This Shochenko is a poet expounding universal truths and is a master innovator of language and poetic imagery and style. Shochenko's last poem prior to his arrest in 1847 was The Soldier's Well. The second version of this poem was published 10 years later and this point marks the beginning of a new period of creativity for Shochenko. To understand the depth and extent of subtext in Shochenko's poetry, a recommended read is Taras Shochenko's Exodus, Exod Tarasa Shochenka by Leonid Pluszcz. This book analyzes the two versions of The Soldier's Well and its philosophical dimension. However, the last period of Shochenko's creativity actually begins with the poem The Neophytes and reaches its zenith with the poem Maria which Ivan Franko regarded as the greatest treasure of Ukrainian poetry. From the point of view of literary mastery, Shochenko's works from that time represent the pinnacle of his creative achievements. This can be seen in the language and style he employs, his masterful juxtaposition of disparate elements to form a harmonious whole, such as the combination of highly pathetic biblical language based on old church Slavonicisms with colloquial, even vulgar speech. This sort of creative experiment would have failed miserably if undertaken by a poet with a poorer mastery of poetic language. As far as content, philosophical ideas, and poetic imagery are concerned, Shochenko's works of this last period, with their departure from social themes, represent his deep reflections on the meaning of human existence and the interrelationship of the individual with the world around him, as well as reflections on history and on God. In the poetry of this period, Shochenko defines his attitude to one of the key, if not the most fundamental themes of his poetry, the relationship of people with God. 
This theme is very controversial in its poetry. It is full of contradictions and paradoxes. At the same time, in the neophytes, Maria, and imitations of the Psalms, these contradictions are resolved and achieve a strange state of harmony. Shochenko's understanding of God is not mystical, but rather very corporeal. For him, God is anthropomorphic, a man-god, that is Christ. Christ's mother is also revered for her humanness, and for Shochenko, her purity is not diminished by the fact that he does not portray her as a virgin. Shochenko's theomachy and his struggle with the official church, first and foremost a state-controlled Russian orthodoxy, was counterbalanced by his deep personal piety. Against the distant Byzantine Shabioth, Shochenko juxtaposes Christ as the embodiment of love, the self-sacrificing and tragic Mary, and God as he appears in natural folk beliefs. A deeper understanding of this topic can be garnered from a thorough reading of Shochenko's poems, as well as from the insightful comments and analyses of scholars, Dmitro Chuzhevsky, George Grabovich, Leonid Plushch, George Shevelov, Ivan Zuba, and others. One should keep in mind that Shochenko's poetry of his later years is radically different from the folk-based poetry that made him famous in the early 1840s and that later gave rise to countless imitations and epigonic works. Indeed, in Shevelov's opinion, the style of Shochenko's later poems, such as the beginning of the neophytes, represents one of the first examples of modernist poetics of expressionism. In art, a similar effect was achieved by perhaps the central figure of 19th century Ukrainian art, Mykola Ge, an admirer of Shochenko's talent. But we will hear more about Mykola Ge another time. On behalf of Dr. Marko Robert Stech, I'm Tanya Stech. See you next time on Eye on Culture. Ocema Kultury sponsorowane fundacjeju Rodyny Ignatowicz. Ocema Kultury.